Aha! <laughs> Viruses! Ah! <laughs> Stress! Why are you laughing, Rowie? There's a worldwide medical pandemic and the world's got a whole heap of stuff going on and everyone's really scared and, and it's really awful and you should be really stressed. How come you're so happy and why have you got a smile on your face? Great question. <laughs> when you're as old as I am, and I have lived a very long time on this amazing planet called Earth, uh, there's always been a lot of horrible things happen to me personally, to other people. Uh, Mother Nature gets really cranky. Uh, people fight with each other. It's called a war or called an argument or it's called bullying on social media. There's a, hor there's a lot of horrible people in the world who do horrible things to each other and say nasty things to each other and do nasty things to each other. And then there's this thing called get sick and there's diseases and bugs and germs and viruses and there's some horrible pandemics. And we often, uh, particularly in, if you've lived in 2020, 21, 22, it's all about a virus. But did you know that there have been pandemics all over the world for a very long time? Coronary heart disease kills millions of people. Type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease kills millions of people. Smoking and inactivity kills millions of people. Rowie, how come you're so happy? Well, there's some things that we have control over and there's some things that we just don't. And would it be a really good idea to accept the things that we cannot change uh, and why do we stress about them? And I, um, I understand, and I'll rephrase that, uh, is it possible that we focus a lot on the things that we can't change? Uh, and again, I'll use uh, the example of the news. If you didn't watch the news and you didn't know that there had been a bushfire or a flood or a hurricane or an earthquake or the horrible things that Mother Nature does, uh, would you feel stressed or sad? And I ask that question for a very particular reason because the stuff that's happening on the other side of the world or in another, another state of our country or another place uh, that we're not there... We actually can't do anything about it. Now, we might find out about it and we might want to go there and help the people that have been challenged. We might want to give money to the people that have been challenged, and that's awesome. But if it's not happening to us right now, is it possible that we can't do anything about it? And I ask that very personally because we seem to be living in a world where if you say to somebody, how are you? And I don't ask that question anymore for a reason because people will often tell me, and then I spend or, or waste, I'll use that very, that sounds quite confrontational, but we seem to then waste a lot of time, uh, I do, trying to turn it into a positive. Uh, and the reason I turn everything into a positive is I'm going to ask this very important question. What choice do we have? What's the alternative? If I turn everything into a negative or if somebody gives me a negative and I stay negative and I stay in that space... What value am I adding to that conversation? And I'm sure you've experienced this where you somebody says something negative and then another person joins in with their negative thing and then another person joins in with their negative thing. And before long, you've got this massive downward spiral of people getting stressed and anxious about something that they may have no control over. Here's a better question. If you're going to talk about something that you have no control over, something that you, you can't fix or change, and there's a really important part to that, if it's in the past, if it's happened before right this minute, we can't change it. All we can do is learn from it, become stronger, tougher and wiser because of it. And a great question that I always ask, if that happened, how can we make sure that it doesn't happen again? So if you got sick, for example, why? What can I now do? I can't change that I was sick and talking about it, will that make it any better? Oh, I've been so sick. And it's, that's one of those examples of conversations where I say, how are you? And somebody says, oh, I've been really sick. So they can't change being sick. And I'll rephrase it, I'll put it in the personal. If I tell you that I'm sick, you can't do anything about that. If I'm better now, I can't change that I was sick. But here's what I'm really interested in and excited about. Why did I get sick and how could I stop getting sick again? What happened to my immune system that it couldn't handle the germ, the bug or the virus, the disease, the thing that happened to me 
and I'll ask a different question again. If there's a virus floating around, if there's germs floating around, if there's a bug, and we used to say that all the time, like there's been a virus going around, there's been a germ or a bug going around, why is it that some people get sick and some people don't? Why is it that we can breathe in the same dirty air or touch the same dirty table or be in an environment with people that are, that are delivering germs and some people get sick and some people don't? And for me as an exercise professional, that's been a really important driving force for me. Because I personally have no, I don't want to get sick. I have no time to be sick. I have to be 100% effort all the time. How about you? So if, I'm, if I do get un, unwell, and it has been a very long time since I've been unwell, and perhaps this is the reason why, because every time I've been sick, I've analyzed why, not complained about I was and not moaned I feel sick. But, okay, I don't feel well. Why? What do I need to do? What do I need to learn from this experience to make sure that I don't get sick again? And the interesting thing about germs, bugs, and viruses is that they attack the immune system. So if I've got a strong immune system, will my immune system be able to fight that germ, bug, virus, or disease? And, of course, the answer is yes. So my question is always, what do I need to do to keep my body in peak physical condition so that if something attacks it, I can fight it? Am I getting enough fresh air? Am I getting enough sunshine for vitamin D? Am I getting uh, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants in my what I put into my mouth so that my body's got something to fight with? Do I have strong muscles pulling on strong bones so I've got a strong immune system so that when I get a cut or a blister or I pick up a germ bug or virus or something attacks my body, that I can fight it? And I get really excited about that, obviously, because I can't change if I was sick. I can just learn from it. How about you? Is that something that's of interest to you? Uh, there's a lot of people, it seems, that, and I ask that, uh, I'll ask that in a question form. Is it possible that if we talk negative and act negative and hang out with negative people and focus on the things that we can't change and then get stressed about them, that we could actually make it worse? Whatever, whatever challenge we're talking about, it could get worse. I'm not about worse. I'm about better. <laughs> How about you? So if there's a challenge, rather than talking about the challenge... Why did it happen so it doesn't happen again? How can I fix it so that the future doesn't have that in it? So if I talk about the immune system, for example, if I don't get fresh air, if I don't get sunshine, if I'm not really fit, if I'm not really strong, if I'm stressed all the time, and the big thing I really want to focus on this, just please consider. If my body is stressed, so I'm scared or I feel guilty or I feel angry or I feel stressed, whatever that means to you, uh, the human body has a mechanism to cope with stress, yeah? It's called the fight and flight theory, philosophy, physiological response, whatever you want to call it. But when my body's under threat, my body produces neurotransmitters from my adrenal glands and from my brain, epinephrine, adrenaline, and cortisol. And they are movement drugs. <laughs> They're not sit on the couch, eat crappy food, drink alcohol, take drugs, watch television and feel sorry for myself drugs. They're movement drugs. So your body automatically, when you're under stress, it says, move, woman, because you've got to get rid of those neurotransmitters. You've got it because what they do, then they themselves aren't the dangerous thing. The dangerous thing is the high blood pressure that they produce, the high heart rate that they produce, the high blood fat levels they produce, and the high blood sugar levels they produce. All of that stuff's good, though, because I can't sprint and I can't punch and fight if I don't have that going on. To be able to actually sprint and to fight... I have to have elevated heart rate, elevated blood pressure, high blood sugar levels and high blood fat levels because that's what gives me energy to sprint and what gives me energy to fight. So stress is good <laughs> if I then fight or flight. If I don't, if I sit on the couch, drink alcohol, eat copious amounts of food, watch terrible television, and usually we don't watch happy movies, do we, when we're in that state, when we're stressed. We tend to pick even scary movies or drama movies or action movies that get us in a more state of stress. And we wonder why our immune system breaks down. If you feel stressed, could it be a really good idea, number one, to disperse all of those uh, 
action drugs, those, those movement drugs, and replace them with, and that's exactly what happens. After you sprint or punch and you've overcome the challenge, you've found a solution to the challenge, uh, your brain is now in a different space. Your actual physiological response to all of that is different. So what happens is I have dopamine, which is a reward drug. So I feel good, yay, I overcame the threat. I have serotonin in my brain, which evens out how I feel. So I don't have this emotional roller coaster going on. I feel satisfied with my life. Serotonin is called a satisfaction neurotransmitter. I have, as that process happens and I'm sprinting and I'm lifting heavier, I'm punching or kicking, I produce endorphins, which are, yes, a happy drug, happy transmitter, but they also produce painkillers. So not only can my body fight and flight, but my body produces painkillers so that it doesn't hurt. That's for me, I just think that's so awesome. And then after I've just uh, run away from the threat, after I've killed the threat, after I've fought the threat, my brain fills up with those chemicals that make me feel really good. And that whole process then means that my body changes, my brain changes. Because when I get puffed, I get fit. When I fight or when I lift heavy, I get strong. And when I overload my brain, when I have to go, <laughs> when I think I can't get away from the threat or I find a solution to the threat or I lift heavier than I thought I could or I punch harder than I thought I could, I have this magnificent thing happen inside my brain. And again, I get really excited about it. It's called brain-derived neurotropic factor, fertilizer for my brain. And I have neurogenesis, grow new brain cells, neuroplasticity, my brain changes. So I can go from stress to happy <laughs> and feel really good in a very short period of time. Uh, and that means that the whole, whatever happened to me, I can learn from it. I can get better, stronger, tougher, wiser because of it. I can think more creatively for next time. Apparently, whoever designed the human body, that's why that system was set up. Because when an animal's chasing me or a wild tribe is chasing me, I have to get away or I have to turn and fight. But I also have to have, be able to think about it differently for next time. So if that situation comes up again, I have to be wiser, tougher and stronger to be able to deal with it better. And isn't that what life is all about? Life's going to throw us earthquakes and bushfires and floods and terminal illnesses and worldwide medical pandemics and germs and bugs and viruses, throw them at us. Are you ready for it? Do you have a body that can fight? And is it possible that a positive headspace, an optimistic headspace, a solution finding headspace is going to be better to fight germs, bugs, viruses, worldwide global financial crisis, earthquakes, floods, droughts, hurricanes, than if I'm angry, anxious, depressed, miserable. So that's why I asked the question, what's the alternative? If you're not happy about something, the alternative is that you're angry and stressed about it. And that, of course, puts your body in a very dangerous state, physically and mentally. So my next question is this. You as a, uh, a parent, a teacher, a coach, an exercise professional, a boss, a leader, and I always ask those because they're the people that in a stressful situation, in a panic situation, in a in a in something that's affecting the community or the country, are we not the people that people turn to? If you're the parent, if you're the teacher, if you're the coach, if you're an exercise professional, I've invested most of my life has been about helping people who are massively under stress, whether it's personal stress or professional stress or relationship stress or their body's out of whack so their, their body's physically stressed. As an exercise professional, my role has been to let's take them out of the stress state, so let's get them punching, kicking, getting puffed to release, disperse the stress inside their body so their brain can fill up with brain-derived neurotropic factor so they can think more clearly and make better decisions and think more creatively for next time. Does that sound exciting to you? So do I need to be, as an exercise professional, as a leader, do I need to be the most positive person in my world? Do I need to be the person that gets in the conversation and, and talks miserable and grumpy and, and stress and panic and sadness and horribleness? Or do I need to be the person that can flick that around? And I'm asking this really personally because I don't think there's any value in adding more negativity to the negative fire. What do you think? 
What if we can put positivity and just absolutely smash negativity with positivity? And I'm not talking about rah, rah, happy, happy, motivational. I'm talking about as a conscious effort, as a, as a leader, what can I do to turn this situation into a positive? If people are talking about wars and bullying and people arguing with each other, what can we learn from that and how can we grow from it? Should we look at both sides of the story? Often people talk about that country's really bad or that person's really bad or that president or that prime minister or that person's bad. Well, we could talk bad and we could talk ne negative, but could we look for the other side of the story? Could we look for the positive? And one of the interesting things about bad people, and I find them fascinating and I find them uh, a wow experience because when I look at when people are disrespectful, when they're rude, when they're, when they're bullies, when they create uh, arguments, when they create negativity, I always wonder why they're doing that and I don't want to be like that. So let's have a look at what they're doing and let's not be like that. I want to learn from that situation. How about you? If I get involved in a negative conversation about war or floods or droughts or bushfires or viruses or diseases, uh, I can't, I'm not finding a solution. I'll rephrase. Is it possible that every minute that I waste on something that I have no control over, I'm not investing a minute on how I can find a solution for it? So do I have, a, do I have control over a worldwide medical pandemic? Well, let's find out. Rather than say, oh, I can't do anything about it, isn't it terrible, and go into a downward spiral of stress and negativity, what can I do about it? And that's an interesting headspace I think is really important as a, as a leader. I can't do anything about it versus how can I do anything about it, or even better, what will we do about it? We can't just let it keep getting worse. <laughs> Uh, it seems that if we keep talking negative, it doesn't change it and could it make it worse? And do we have a responsibility to stop it from being worse? Do we have a responsibility to find a solution? So not only what can I do, but how can I do it? When will I do it? And let's do it. And it might just be this simple because if it's something that I can't change and something that I've got absolutely no control over, how about this? <sighs> let's laugh about it which is the start of this whole conversation. Rowie, how can you be so happy when there's so many challenges in the world? Well, the challenges that I have no control over, I, can't, I cannot waste time there. I have no control over it. So I'm going to accept it and move on. If I do have control over it, I get happy and excited about that because I've got control over it. I can do something about it. Can I get a healthy immune system? Yes. Can I choose to have a positive attitude if I'm healthy, fit and strong or the other way around? I will automatically have a more positive attitude because I am healthy, fit and strong. Uh, how can I inspire people to think more positively, act more positively, be more positive? I have, they're all things that I have control over. So, and I just use the simple things and I use the same examples all the time. If somebody's talking about the weather, first of all, I refuse to talk about the weather because it's such a boring topic and everybody talks about the weather. But if people are talking about rain, let's talk about free water out of the sky. If people are talking about it's so windy today, how about the kite flies are loving it today? If people talk about how cold it is, how about you have a much faster metabolism when it's cold? If people are talking about how hot it is, how about isn't it awesome that it's warm? Uh, and I use this as a really funny example because I lived in Queensland, Australia for a very long time where it's hot most of the time. And people complain about being hot. And I go, yeah, it's Queensland. <laughs> of course it's hot. Now I live in the South Island of New Zealand and sometimes it gets cold here. And people complain it's so cold. Yes, it's the South Island of New Zealand. You know how funny it is though? There are times in Queenstown, New Zealand, the South Island of New Zealand, where it's really hot and people complain it's really hot here. How about this? That's something we have absolutely no control over, so how about we enjoy it? People complain about traffic. Okay, there's cars on the road. Isn't that awesome? Rather than moaning and complaining about the bad traffic, there's a stack of people with things to do and places to go and fun experiences to have. Uh, people complain about being sick. How about this? Why did I get sick? And let's make sure that doesn't happen again. So what do I need to do to get my body healthy, fit and strong? I don't want to focus on the sick. I want to focus on the healthy. 
People say, I can't, I automatically turn it into how can I? People say, I'm stressed, and I go, isn't that awesome? Because when you're stressed, your body's producing epinephrine, adrenaline, cortisol, which means you can now move fast, because that's what they're for, they're movement drugs. So instead of being stressed and angry, how about let's get puffed, let's lift heavy, let's punch, let's kick, so that then your brain is filled up with different neurotransmitters and you'll be able to think more clearly about this particular situation. I'm in a terrible job. Well, let's get out of it. How can we get you out of this terrible job? I'm in a horrible relationship. Let's get you out of it. What do we need to do to get you out of that horrible situation? Rather than focus on, oh, it's terrible, it's terrible, it's terrible. What can we do about it? And it's an interesting thing. People talk about sympathy and empathy. And I don't want to get into the translation of that because I think it might be different for everybody. But how about consider this? If I'm sympathetic, could it be a little bit about, I feel sorry for you, you poor thing, that's terrible, so I have sympathy for what you're going through. I like empathy, but and this is just my definition of it. Uh, you've got a challenge, how can we sort it? I'm here to help. Let's make sure that we get you out of this terrible situation. What do we need to do that whatever's happening to you at the moment, rather than feeling sorry for what's happened to you, what can we do to fix it, change it, make it better and make you tougher and stronger in the process? Uh, I don't know if that's a great definition of empathy, but I really like it. Because every time somebody presents me with a, with a problem, and I hate that word for a reason, because usually problems don't have a solution. Challenges, on the other hand, that excites me. So you've got yourself into a challenging situation. What do we need to do to get you out of that challenging situation? What can we do to learn from it and grow from it and get better because of it? So yes, I'm a positive, happy person. Yes, I'm accused on a regular basis of being a positive, happy person. How about this? What's the alternative? I don't want a reputation of being a negative person. I don't want a reputation of being a pessimist. I don't want a reputation of being a problem finder. I want to be a solution finder. How about you? So could it be really important if you are in that leadership role of parent, teacher, exercise professional, boss, coach, pastor, could it be a really good idea to consciously think about every negative, how can I turn it into a positive? If I have no control over it, how can I drop it off and move on? If I do have control over it, how can I fix it and move on and become better and stronger and more positive and wiser and more optimistic because of it? So whether it's a physical challenge, a mental challenge, a worldwide challenge that everybody's affected by, whether it's a mother nature challenge and, and the world's gone crazy because what's happening? How about... I don't know what's happening, but let's work through it positively and find a solution rather than talk about the negative. Could that be a really good idea? Ha <laughs> ha.